concerns about the impact the coronavirus outbreak could have on the global economy. Overnight, share prices in Japan dropped dramatically as investors worried about the spread of the disease. Uh, Sean is at a TV factory in Bishop Auckland for us today, where production has been cut. Uh, let's find out what's going on there this morning, Sean. Yeah, morning to you now. Morning, Sally. A real good example about how something like that can really affect us in the home because our TV, TVs we like to buy, big new ones on the wall, the small little ones that we might have in our cameras. He's doing a very good job, this lad, actually. Uh, they are all being affected at factories like this. So it's not just your remote controls that somewhere like Cello Electronics here are having issues with the supply chain, but also the electronics behind the scenes as well. Now, when you multiply that out across businesses right across the UK, across the world, that's how it starts to have an effect on economies. And we're starting to see not just supply issues, travel restrictions, reluctance to travel having an effect on airlines. That hits stock markets. That's why we saw shares fall yesterday. We've got Brian, the boss here at Cello Electronics with us morning. Brian. Morning, Sean. Um, so you have gone down to a four-day week here. So you know, pretty pretty quiet yesterday for a Monday here, where it wouldn't yes, normally. Yes, that's right. Yes. Why? We, why we have made you that done decision that? about two weeks ago to so do that. Yeah. What, what triggered that decision? Well, it's just the knowledge and that we depend on parts coming in on a weekly basis from China, as do many uh, factories or businesses in the UK. Parts or finished product, most of it today arrives from China, and. Um, we knew that we'd had Chinese New Year, which always causes a two-week break in parts arriving, which we'd already allowed for. But now, with the virus in China, factories are just starting again. But it will give us six weeks um, without any parts coming in, plus the two weeks from, um, for Chinese New Year. So this factory will see no parts arriving for around eight weeks. Now, we keep a stock, um, but we have to try to to eke that stock out until um, such time as parts start to arrive again. And we reckon if we went on to a four day week, we'd just about get there without having to uh, lay anybody off totally. But so is that, they're the kind of decisions you're having to make. Are people not getting paid then on that day where you're not open? No, we, we will pay all, our, all the staff that we have on our payroll will be, uh, will be paid. Any staff coming from agencies or something, it's not, we won't be paying them, but all our full-time staff will be paid. So that's where the saving is made a little bit. Um, do you expect it to come back or is this going to be a hit to the business? No, I don't expect, this is a, um, we, should, we have to worry about the, the disease in total. I, you know, if, the dizzy, if it is stopped, this will be just a bit of delayed business. The business will come back later in the year. Mm. Um, I don't think that, that this is a big financial problem um, that, that means a big loss of profits for us this year. But some businesses, of course, and we see it in China, some small businesses that are reliant in this type of way, mm. if the virus really gets a grip and they start to close areas down, some businesses will go bankrupt. Well, Brian, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about how what you do next. We've got Christos with us this morning as well from Durham Business School. Uh, Hello. Uh, morning to you, Christos. Morning. Just branching it out then a little bit to, to sectors right across the UK. Which ones are being hit hardest and what can they do? Well, you, one would expect to have all the sectors affected that have some sort of exposure to China, either China as a market or China as a source for supply chain. So uh, this is a good example of a manufacturer which is likely to be affected by this kind of shortage. But you would expect sectors in the automotive, um, companies automotive sector, exposure to the supply chain there, and everybody has some sort of unique link with the supply chain. I would also expect companies that actually use China as a market, and, that, and, and that, that's something not to be forgotten. But uh, China over the last few years has been one, uh, one significant market for a lot of manufacturers across the UK and, and, and Europe more widely. So actually exporting there yeah. as well. Great. Well, Christos, thank you. Um, we're going to be talking more to, to these guys over the course of the morning about, about what businesses can do and, and how those decisions are actually made. Big decision to go down to a four-day week here changes things for staff, particularly those agency workers. And we'll have a look at how those other sectors across the UK are being affected as well. Because when stock markets are falling more than 3%, biggest for... Uh, for four years, then it's uh, definitely something to keep an eye on. So more about that a bit later. But first, we get a bit of news, travel and weather where you are. Yeah, women fascinating. Who know the inside story of that trial. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens at the sentencing hearing in a few weeks' time as well. Um, 22 minutes past seven this morning. Now, growing concerns about the impact the coronavirus outbreak could have on the global economy. Overnight, share prices in Japan dropped dramatically as investors worried about the spread of the disease. 
Sean is at a TV factory in Bishop Auckland where production has had to be cut. What on earth is going on, Sean? Morning, Sally. Uh, morning, Dan. Yes, yeah, so production cut. This is the first working day of the week here at Cello Electronics. Kennedy starting the, the box packing early and everybody else will be up and running by 8 o'clock this morning. But it should have started yesterday. But they supply... They have a lot of supplies coming from China, like these electronics that go into our TVs, and that's had a knock-on effect onto the business. That's why we're starting to see businesses really feel those effects. The stock market's down more than 3% yesterday. We'll have a chat to Brian, who's the boss here at Cello Electronics. Morning to you, Brian. Morning to you again, Sean. Um, so, Brian, just looking here, you've got all the, all the stocks you've got yeah. piled high. What are you expecting now to happen to these, given that you've got delays on all the stuff you're getting in from China? Well, um We've got parts, and so we keep parts here. So we'll, through this period, we're a British manufacturer manufacturing here in the UK um, against perhaps some of our competitors that import everything in who will receive no stock in the next probably six weeks. So I think we're in quite a nice position. Are you seeing can... customers start to say, oh, hang on a minute, if you've got a shortage, I need to start buying these tellies off you a bit more? No doubt we have about 25 different models here that, that we make, and we've already put a list out to our customers of what stock we've got, what parts we've got, so they know. And, yes, yeah, some models we're already out of stock of. So it's starting to get a bit busier. Brian, yeah. thank you very much. Let you get back to it because it is a busy time. But it's not just importers like Brian who are having to import all these electronics. There's a lot of British businesses... Universities, for example, as well, who export services, export all kinds of goods to China. We can have a chat to Christos from uh, Durham University Business School. Hi, Christos. Hi, hello. So hello. we've done a lot of talking about imports this morning, but if we talk about our exports from the UK to China, are you seeing changes go on there because of the virus? Yeah, it's likely to have some sort of short-term, not necessarily longer-term impact on, on, on businesses to, that they try to export to, to China as well. I mean, if you think about uh, what we have been saying over the last few years, China is one of the, one of the most important booming markets in the world. I mean, we also experienced that, uh, we also experienced this at the university as well, that potentially you have a lot of students that might be coming our way, that potentially might be hesitating a little bit in trying to think about the degree to which they would like to come and study here, for instance. So as the uh, coronavirus is becoming more of an issue and more people are hesitating to, to purchase or businesses to invest and so on, that's, that's also likely to have an impact on the way, on the, um, uh, on the uh, on exporting to China as well. Interesting. And, and it, do you think there'll be a difference to how the long-term, medium-term effects will be com from comparing importers to exporters? Can one get sorted a little bit quicker than the other? Well, that's a difficult one to sort. I mean, if you look at what's happening around here, for instance, is that there is, people are stockpiling. So people are, are, are getting ready to push the button to see what they're going to do. Uh, so which one is, 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 is likely to be affected the most? Well, time, time will tell. Yeah. yeah interesting. And, and then just finally, the, the long-term effects of this full stop globally, the, the effect on China's economy, is that something we'll, we'll get back? Is it just people are holding off on their travelling and they'll do it at a later date and they'll do their spending at a later date, or is it lost forever? I don't think it's going to be lost forever. I think people, uh, people will eventually start travelling, you know, continue studying, continue buying the things they would like to buy and so on. I guess the key thing here is how long this is going to last and how long can people wait before there is a longer-term effect. Where we are now and from what we're hearing now, chances are that the next few weeks things are going to start to recover, but no one actually knows this, yeah? Christos, thank you very much. Thanks for, for joining us this morning. So, you know, the, the workers here they didn't have to be in yesterday starting today on a four-day week the agency workers who would maybe be expecting to be working and be paid they have not had that extra day's work the fifth day of work that they'd normally have so that is how these things start to have a ripple effect on the whole uk economy when you multiply that right across the country